What up? Welcome to What to Stream, the latest show from Hollywood Critics Association. My name is Rama, and I'm joined by my two lovely co-hosts this evening, Lupe and Morgan. And we are going to share with you our recommendations and opinions about the movies or television shows that you should check out on various streaming services. So let's rock this. So I know it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We all sit down on our couch and we're ready to watch something. We know there's so many good things out there, but where do you start, right? Like it's the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems that I find myself in all of the time. And I'm really excited that, yeah, the HCA is kicking off this streaming series. And I am so excited to hear your picks too, because that will just add to the movies that I want to see. Um, but I want to kick things off real quick with a Friday release. So the film that I absolutely loved technically came out last Friday, but it's still being circulated now. It's streaming on Kino Marquee, and it's a movie called Test Pattern. And Test Pattern um, is written and directed by, it's a di directorial debut written and directed by Shatara Michelle Ford. And it is described as like a part psychological, part realist drama that talks about the Me Too movement. And picture never, rarely, sometimes, always told through a Black lens. Um, basically, it's an inter interracial couple, a Black woman and a white man. And after a night out, the woman gets roofied and raped. And the next day, the, the couple, they try to get her help, but every hospital they go to, every police officer they try and get in contact with, they don't take her and her problems seriously. And it's a really heavy watch, but it's also, I think, so important. And the music in it is fantastic. It's a quietly, I don't know, somber, but it's a really important movie that I think everyone should watch. And I, yeah, again, that's streaming on Kino Marquis right now. Have you guys, have you heard of it? No. Oh, that's the first time I heard of it. Okay, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend it, it's really good. Time to put it on our list. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's a movie that you might have missed. Maybe you missed Test Pattern, so here's a two for one. I absolutely love this film called Long Shot. I don't know if you've heard of that either. It's a 40 minute documentary on Netflix and it is I, that's the one film that I always recommend to people when they're sick and need something to watch, when they're bored and need something to watch. This is always my go-to movie. It combines some of my favorite things. It's a crime Netflix series. It is uh, about kind of circles around the Los Angeles Dodgers, which I love, and Larry David from Curve Your Enthusiasm. So like, how can you get any better than that? It's It's truly one of the best documentaries I've seen. And um, basically it, it tells the story of this man who was falsely accused of a murder and he was trying to prove his innocence but was having a really hard time because again, I guess this is a theme, no one was believing him. He was um, a Hispanic man, person of color and everyone assumed, the government officials and police officers assumed that he was involved in this crime. And it takes a miracle, I don't wanna kind of give too much away, but it takes a miracle to prove that he wasn't the man at the center of this murder. And Longshot is such a good documentary, 40 minutes, very easily digestible, really good. If you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, you'll love it. If you follow the Dodgers, you'll love it. If you like crime shows, you'll love it. So I think there's a lot to love in this one. Um, again, Longshot streaming on Netflix. You know, I, I thought you were talking about the Seth Rogen one was from last year. I, I, that oh. was the, the first immediate thought that I got. Oh, oh, that's, oh, sorry. <laughs> Very different <laughs> movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very different. Uh, that one's good too, but if you're, if, yeah. <laughs> so this is a documentary on Netflix, got it. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the last film that I have is a personal recommendation. And this is a film called Tripping with Niels Fromm. And this came out, it's streaming on MUBI now, M-U-B-I. And this was one of my favorite films of last year. I tried to put it on our HCA top 10, but technically it wasn't a movie, so it wasn't allowed. But in my broad sense of the word movie, Tripping with Niels Fromm is on it. It is incredible. Um, it's a concert film 
um, which th that records this this show from this German composer and producer named Niels Fromm. And if you miss live music at all, like the last year we've not been able to go to shows. I absolutely love going to shows. I also work in music supervision. So going to shows and music is a really big part of my life. And this film is incredible. It's about an hour and a half long of him just being this genius multi-instrumentalist with this ambient music and a lot of electronics. Um, it's very incredible. I think I watched it twice in one week because I just needed to watch it. And I'll, I'll probably watch it again in the next month or so, just when I need that kick of live music and aliveness. It's really, really good. Um, it's, it's executive produced by Brad Pitt and his company Plan B. Um, highly recommend streaming on Mubi. It's, it's a good one, yeah. I love how your titles, all three of them are kind of obscure, but interesting, you know, not like the mainstream one. I'm now it really captured my curiosity. Yeah, thank you. I <laughs> tend to, that's kind of what I tend to go for typically are a little more of the independent film. So like the, the site I write for Cinemacy, it's dedicated to independent film pretty exclusively. And that's kind of been my wheelhouse for so long. So that's why it's cool that we're doing this because a lot of the big movies I haven't seen at all. And, and I know I need to, because clearly to, you know, stay in the conversation of, of film, <laughs> I have to be aware of these movies. And so when I, yeah, when I think of what to watch, it's, it's usually more of an indie selection, but, you know, opening myself up to, to bigger blockbuster movies is a good thing. All right. So, uh on hbo max is tom and jerry also going to movie theaters but i have a feeling most people will check it out on hbo max for obvious reasons mm -hmm. um it's definitely for the family i was a tom and jerry fan obviously as a kid so when you first start watching the movie it's a little bizarre because one you're taking taking them out of us um a small setting and you're putting them in the big city you put them in this fancy hotel so it's a little weird to see the 2D animation against the live action. So it took me a little while to kind of get used to it. But then once, you know, the ball started rolling, you get a little, you know, accustomed to it. I mean, the story, I mean, it's for kids. It's not, I don't think it's going to be much of an attraction for the original crowd because it is so different. It's so silly um, that you might not be able to get past the lukewarm story and it stars grace chloe grace moretz and michael pena and chloe is endearing um and i feel really bad for her because she was basically looking at nothing and these characters they kept it og they don't speak but the weird part is that all the other animals speak <laughs> so uh -huh. it's a little like either you gonna do one thing or or both right but it's was a little that distracting yeah because talk? No, the distract when they, when they are on screen together, it's like watching the, the original show. But then when you put them amidst talking animals and they're not speaking, it's a little weird. Yeah. So I couldn't get past that. But I think you know, kids will they're not like us adults where we're rationalizing everything. To them, it's just a cartoon, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I honestly I fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> the movie. I had to rewind. Um, and the only reason I was watching is because I interviewed Chloe Grace Moretz, because um, I'm not a fan of two uh, animation, live action, especially with property that I've grown up with, because you're always disappointed, right? Sure, yeah, makes you sense. Know? Yeah, but you know, I, my feeling is movie studios don't make that for the original crowd. They make it for the new generation, the young kids. So I'm, I'm sure for them, they'll have a, a good time. And it's in the spirit of the Tom and Jerry, where Jerry's getting the best of Tom most of the time. I've always been sad for Tom. Um, and Chloe said she feels the same exact way because he gets most of the uh, accidents. <laughs> so who is Chloe in the film? So she Part plays, so she plays, um, uh, well, actually, what do I want to call her? She's trying to get a job. Um, Tom um, runs into her and so she loses her, the products that she was trying to deliver. So she loses her job and then she stumbles into a hotel and you can tell she's a bit of a grifter. Mm -hmm. um she cons this girl who's there for an interview as a special events coordinator for the hotel 
and she and she and the girl is nasty to her like oh you don't belong here what are you doing here and she plays a trick on her and dismisses her but she leaves behind her resume so she passes off her resume as a special effects events coordinator and so she becomes a special events coordinator not having any experience so she's there with tom and jerry kind of uh, misleading people so she hires tom to get rid of jerry because jerry has set up house at the hotel so she hires tom <laughs> to be the exterminator <laughs> so you can see it's silly <laughs> Um, and so then the antics ensue and there's some big action pieces. Uh, I don't know if you remember the original show or I think some of the uh, old Hanna-Barbera shows, we'd have like a windstorm of animals fighting. <laughs> so they, keep, they, yeah, they bring yeah. that in, but then all around there's the live action um, things falling. And so that was like, oh, wow, that's, that was kind of cool. So I'll admit that was kind of cool. Um, but the actors have to react pretty much to nothing in this big environment. You know, it's easy to imagine a monster but little tiny two, two feet high characters. I mean, that was, that was a good, um, technically it was well done. It's directed mm -hmm. by Tim Story and he's done Think Like a Man, Ride Along. And so he's done mostly urban type films. So this is very different for him. So I think he proved he's a very, very capable um, director as far as the technical aspect. I mean, the script, you know, I won't comment about that, but it's for children, so it gets a little silly. Mm -hmm. um, but my main problem with it was Michael Pena. He he has an accent and and then he, and he's the sort of the uh, nemesis because he's jealous of Chloe's character because he's also a special events manager, and so he's threatened by her. Mm -hmm. But he has this accent. I thought, okay, he's going to come out as a fake as well. But it never happens because that accent is so terrible. You're thinking, oh, this guy's just playing like he's just very, you know um affluent special events guy and he knows what he's doing but it never happens because his accent is just so fake that you think he's a fake is it like he's trying to be cartoony to fit in no no he's trying to come off like you know like kind of like the butler english mm. type you know like i'm from a i'm a fancy hotel special events person but uh and and that is following fantasy island which i despise that movie <laughs> He also had an accent in there. He was trying to do the Ricardo Montalban accent. So follow, this following up with that, I was just like, oh man, dude, give it up. <laughs> like, yeah. So there's no rhyme or reason for him to have an accent. I mean, to show the fact that he thinks he's posh. But it would have been a little, uh, it would have been a better outcome if you had shown him to be just a regular guy. But that never, that never happened. So that was a little, he was a cartoonish kind of a character as well. Like he was there like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm going to destroy her career. <laughs> so, uh, but like I said, it's, it's for kids. It's not for us adults to enjoy. But like I said, it was uh, technically it was well done um, considering what they had to deal with and kind of bringing in that OG element with the modern live action um, element to it. So, you know, I recommend it for families. I think they'll they'll have a really good time. For the OG people, you're you're gonna be disappointed, but you probably expect that at this point. All right. So in case in case you missed it, I caught two really good uh, series featuring women. I really like all these powerhouse women coming out on TV. I love it. Mm -hmm. So the first one is Firefly Lane, and Netflix. Damn you, Netflix! They always get me. I put it on just to have background. I think I was doing something. I just finished watching something else on Netflix. And I, I'll just leave it on background because it popped up in the recommended section and the trailer kept playing. I'm like, oh, I'll play. And I got caught up in it. <laughs> Only meaning to just to put it in the background. I enjoyed but it. You enjoyed it? Yeah, it was yeah, pretty good. I mean, Catherine Heigl is really, really good in it. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be surprised if she's nominated for it. She's playing a very, very complicated character. And the show is bizarre because it goes back and forth between their childhood, their teenage years, and the adults. So it's not told in a linear fashion. So you have flashbacks in within the scene within the, the episode. So at first it's a little jarring, but then you see uh, the reason for them going back because one thing as an adult triggers a memory um, to the past. Not necessarily the character it triggers, but just for the viewers uh, for um, viewers to get a background of why she is a certain way. You get a flashback to to the past, and it also stars Sarah Chalk from Scrubs, and she's also really good. But I mean, Katherine Heigl is the one that shines in this one because she is so, not disturbed, 
but she's got issues because she was raised by a hippie mom who paid no attention to her. And her only saving grace was her neighbor, played by Sarah Chalk, whose family sort of took her in and kept her grounded. And Sarah Chalk's character is very kind of shy, timid girl. And Catherine Heigl's character, she's the opposite. She's very outgoing, although a little sometimes reserved because of the mom. She's embarrassed by the mom um, because she's a big, you know, she's a druggie, basically. So she has no parental um, examples at all, except for the neighbors. And so they are long life uh, friends. And she's the one that kind of gets her through it. And Catherine Heigl's character becomes a sort of this talk show host, sort of in the vein of Ellen. Um, and so she's got her ups and downs and it's about love. And, and when they go back to the retro, like 60s, 70s, I love all the clothing. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to see uh, the wardrobe um, on the show, but it's a really, really good show. And I got hooked. And I think I finished it in two days. <laughs> it's a soap opera, basically. Nice. Yeah, it's a soap opera. Yeah. But, but it, you know, it, it reels you in, doesn't it, Rama? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because you want to so see, great. yeah, it, you're investing in how is this going to turn out? Like who's going to save who? Um, and, but it's, it's kind of on equal ground where they each kind of help each other along. And it's a, a honest look at friendship, I think. It's not one of these, you know, sex in the city type girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're very real. It's like you can, you can relate to, to the relationship. And then my second one, which I just finished this weekend, was Tell Me Your Secrets. Another one I thought, ah, I'll check it out. And um, it stars Amy Brenneman and, oh my God, can I remember the name of the other actress? Lily Rabbit. Lily Rabbit, yeah. Yeah. And she's playing, um, it's a weird, a weird show to describe because there's so many plots. But basically it revolves around this woman who was a girlfriend to a serial killer. And at first, you don't know if you believe her because she's claiming she doesn't remember anything. So you're like, uh, she doesn't remember anything. Is this, is this true or is she just faking it? So she gets out of, uh, out of jail on a witness protection program. The psychiatrist is hoping that getting her out of, the, out of the prison will help her bring back memories to help her recall like what went on. Some families are still seeking um, information about what happened to their daughter if they were one of the victims and so forth. And Amy Brenneman plays one of the moms of the victims. And she is great in this movie. She goes absolutely nuts. She becomes obsessed with finding her, um, or finding this woman to get the information about where her daughter might be. She has this feeling that her daughter is still alive and everyone is telling her son and her husband, you know, are saying you need to have closure, she's gone. But she is not giving up. So she becomes obsessive. She hires an ex-con, ex-rapist, who's out on parole. And he's trying to go the straight path. But she lures him in thinking, well, this guy knows how to find people because he stalked his victims. And that's a little disturbing to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and he's very Zen now. He's, he prays to Buddha. But she pulls him back into that life. And it's very, very sad that he was trying to go straight and narrow. And she pulled him back in out of desperation. Um, so obviously he goes down an ugly, very ugly path. And the show is a little disturbing in that aspect, like what he does and he becomes a detective sort of, but in a, in a serial rapist sort of way. Um, and then Lily is living in a little small town, but there's not always, there's something going on in this little, little town. And this is too much to explain basically. So there's a lot of subplots going on and it gets a little messy at times. But you're in it to find out what the heck is going on. Is she, is she really, um, is she really innocent? She really doesn't know what you know what happened because her memory is gone, or what's the deal? So slowly you get um, answers here and there, and then at the end, of course, they leave you with a big old cliffhanger, mm. and you're not satisfied. So it was you know unlike Firefly Lane, you feel a little bit of satisfaction, like oh you ended this, and you know um, you can't wait till the next season. But this one really left it open-ended and you're like damn it I gotta wait a whole year <laughs> so that kind of sucks and, and then that's like streaming where the, I'm the sorry that's on um, Amazon Prime nice okay yeah and then lastly uh our OG movie or classic movie I would recommend is on Prime it's called Last of the Mohicans I love this movie mm. um it's by Michael Mann Daniel Day-Lewis stars in it Madeline Stowe 
and it's just a really beautifully beautifully shot movie the soundtrack is one of my favorites i have the soundtrack i love that soundtrack and it's just a beautifully shot movie and daniel day lewis plays um he's a white man but um he was raised um by native native americans and so then this just takes place during the was it 1757 French and Indian War? And he has to save these two women um, who are daughters of a big um, uh, a colonel um, in the uh, English, um, yeah, the English army. And so he has to protect these women and he brings his, his adopted father and adopted brother um, to help. So it deals with a lot of with Native Americans and it really brings a, a respect to the culture and the fact that warring tribes also fought against each other like there was warring tribe there was a tribe that was on the french side um that would do the bidding of the french and then same thing on the english side where you have bidding you know in native americans would help the english so you know, it's an inch, i don't know how, how true it is but you know it's a different perspective um when it came out it was in from 1992 so if you have not seen that movie i'm pretty sure you'll like it and of course you've probably heard the line uh the famous line i will find you <laughs> Stay alive, I will find you. Have you guys heard that quote? Yes, and I haven't I haven't seen the movie yet, but I didn't know it was streaming on Amazon Prime. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> sure, no, I- uh, Weekend's plans. It? Yeah, if you go on the app, the app is the best way to see what's on Netflix, or the older movies on Amazon Prime and Hulu mm. and Netflix. Do they have its own category? Because you know, some like streaming services have- it I says know, um, now streaming, so it's pos uh, probably now okay. yeah now streaming. You know, old movies are brought in to stream, so that's the under the category it was in. Cool. New Friday release for me uh, this coming Friday. Crazy about her. It's a Spanish movie. Hails from Spain. It'll be on Netflix. It's basically like if One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was a romantic comedy. I'm a rom com <laughs> guy. I love romantic comedy. So. It's funny, it's deeply moving, and it's about a guy who checks into a psychiatric facility to be close to the woman that he has a crush on uh, because she's, uh, she has bipolar. So that's the, uh, the synopsis. It has a vibrant cinematography, fast-paced humor, a script that can make you laugh at one minute and then tug at your heartstrings the next. Um, and I know that mental illness is a sensitive issue. Uh, some people might push back against the romantic comedy packaging of mental illness, but I think this uh, movie does it just right. And Crazy About Her doesn't aim to say, this is what you should or should not do. Uh, overall, this is just a lighthearted, positive, hopeful film that reaffirms the fact that love is possible under any circumstances or any place for that matter. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, it, it, it hasn't come out yet. It comes out this Friday. So it's, it's Spanish, but I watch it of course with subtitles, <laughs> but I, I love it very much and I, I could not recommend it enough. Um, something you might've missed uh, everybody at home, The Walking Dead actually premiered again this past Sunday. I know they marketed as February 28th, but they wanna get people to subscribe to their streaming service, AMC Plus. So they had this marketing strategy. Yeah, we're, you, you can watch it a week early before it airs. So that's what happened. It's um, the, the first of the six new episodes of season 10. Um, and of course, for all of us Walking Dead fans, uh, it's good to see the show back. It's good to see Maggie back. Uh, Lauren Cohen's character who stepped away for uh, previous seasons due to paid disputes. <laughs> I guess they, uh, they managed to settle that somehow. Uh, but Maggie is now becoming more of a lead character this time around. Uh, same old Walking Dead suspense, same old Walking Dead intensity, brand new fresh faces, including the badass mass man. There's awkward tension between Maggie and Negan because of the history involving Glenn. So all that drama, all that action, of course, uh, you can definitely see that on AMC+. Plus. I believe it's $4.99 per month, if you will, uh, to subscribe. And uh, we also got to see Maggie's son. So that's interesting. Um, the question is, of course, where has Maggie been all these years that she was missing? You know, and is she hiding something that we need to be worried about? Something that can uh, jeopardize Alexandrians? You know, that's my question, at least. 
Um, so I can't wait to find out more about the new villains, the Reapers, who seem to be more dangerous than the previous villains. Um, either case, it's good to have the show back because now there's something to look forward to again on Sunday nights. <laughs> so I was like, oh, because you know the football season's already over. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, and- Has that show been going on for 10 years? Like, did yes. they take a break in between? Because I, I haven't, I mean, obviously I know of it. I haven't watched it, but is it coming back a new thing? Not a new thing, if you will, but I would say that the way to put it is um, they took out some of the uh, key characters and then they, you know, some of the supporting now become lead. Mm. They push uh, Maggie and all the other guys uh, forward now. Um, the there's always a pattern when it comes to the villains, the saviors, the whispers, the governor people. So I'm hoping there's, uh, they break the pattern with this new one. So that's what I'm hoping will be quote unquote new or fresh, if you will. Uh, but uh, next season, season 11 will be the final. They're, they're cutting it, you know, they're calling it quit. Are they? Uh, season, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Well, it's probably about time. Exactly. <laughs> they're losing, right? they're losing oh. viewership, right? <laughs> It's gone on 11 seasons is a lot. Yeah, that's very impressive. They've reached yeah. this, they reached the syndication level. So, Ooh. yeah, it's like, yeah, we got the money now. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I mean, it was, it was, it was time to go, I think. But, uh, the news for you guys, uh, there's gonna be a spin off uh, about Carol and Daryl. It's like a, oh. a couple thing, yeah. So, just those two characters and their little oh. adventure. I got a chance to watch the next episode after the premiere episode. Ah, yes, yes. And it is all about them. Um, I couldn't watch. Them? Yeah, I was having technical. They gave me the first two episodes to watch, or the extended ex- episodes, but I couldn't watch the first one. But for some reason, I could watch the second one. So it's a what tease. Was it? it wasn't that exciting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, that's not a good sign then. <laughs> huh? Yeah. I mean, they've been trying to do it since last season, or well, actually, this is the current, this is still the, the 10th season, but they've been trying to formulate that pair. That pair, yeah. That couple. But, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It's not the same energy because they're so somber now. <laughs> yeah, without without Rick and Michonne, of course, the dynamic is you know different. You know, yeah. Without Rick and Michonne. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not exactly comedic type of people. So, and you still yes. had that element with some of the other characters where they were bringing kind of a, a levity to it. And then, and that's the pair is, is missing that. As much as I love those characters. I agree. I agree. That could be problematic, definitely. Yeah. Um. So my last and personal recommendation is Kid Cosmic. It's a series on Netflix. I'm a big fan of animation. It's an animated series about a kid who dreams of becoming a superhero and then stumbles across cosmic stones or rings of power that make his dream come true. Um, It's brought to you by the same creator of the Powerpuff Girls. So if you like Powerpuff Girls, you're going to enjoy Kid Cosmic. (laughs) It's massively action-packed. The characters are wacky. The storyline is engaging. The humor is hilarious. Uh, Every episode has a ton of uh, hilarious hero moments. Um, And it it also applies, you know, that it's 2D animation. And sometimes it applies uh, kind of like a retro static visual that makes it look like as if you're watching an 80s VHS, VHS tape of Kid Cosmic. Uh, so, the, and the characters are diverse. The voice casts are terrific. It's about a misfit team, which I always champion. And it, it flips superhero on its head. Uh, everything that the, the, the characters think about being a superhero, you know, it's like, oh, it's not exactly that way. Okay, that's interesting. So they're stumbling and fumbling their way into becoming a team and saving the world. And it's just such a duper, cool, super duper fun, cool show. Um, I, I highly recommend it, most definitely. Now, is that geared more adults and kids? It, you like the it, humor? That, that's a good question. It, it's mostly geared towards the same audience as Powerpuff Girls, so mostly kids. Uh-huh. But, but you know, I, I'm a grown up. <laughs> and I yeah. enjoy you it. enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess to answer your question, it's like uh, it, it'll entertain the kid in you. So the kid in you will, will good answer. Will like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good save. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's our episode today of What to Stream. We hope all those recommendations help as you choose which programming to enjoy this coming weekend. Share your recommendations and questions in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in and join us again next time. Good night.